Hi, welcome to the Preform Line Products training video for the Coyote Dome Closure. The Coyote Dome Closure is specifically designed for applications where a dome style configuration is preferred. It boasts several unique features that are designed to meet the uncompromising demands of today's ever-evolving communications networks. The Coyote Dome Closure is available in three sizes. The 6.5 by 17 inch, the 6.5 by 22 inch, and the 9.5 by 28 inch. Each satisfies a variety of fiber optic distribution network requirements, including fiber to the premise, or FTTP applications. Keep an open mind. The Coyote Dome closures can be used on your copper plant as well. Before I begin, I want to point out a few features that are unique to the Coyote Dome closure. First, two words, simplicity and flexibility. The Coyote Dome closure was built from the ground up using the same craft-friendly, simple fiber management system that put the Coyote name on the map. When you open the carton, you'll notice there are very few loose piece parts. The end plate and fiber organizer are fully assembled, simplifying the steps to reduce the time required for your installation. What makes the Coyote Dome closure unique in the industry is the segmented end plate design. The patented design allows true independent access to each cable without affecting the surrounding cables and each end plate cap is re-enterable and reusable. Each Coyote Dome closure end plate accepts PLP's exclusive silicone grommet sealing system. It can seal cables up to 1.25 inches in diameter. Single and multi-hole grommet designs and PLP's patented segment end plate design provide the ultimate level of flexibility needed to support today's demanding fiber optic network designs. The Coyote Dome closure meets the demanding requirements of GR771 for all aerial, buried, and underground applications. All PLP closures are manufactured in the USA following ISO procedures to assure quality, and they are backed by the experience and field support that PLP has been noted for since 1947. Before we begin today, I would like to show you the components included in the kit. The dome, end plate organizer assembly, dome clamp, dome gasket, grommets, cable measure tape, lubricant pack, small parts bag, and the application procedure. Splice tray options for the Coyote 6.5 by 17 inch dome closure, low profile tray, the standard tray, and the light grip tray the Coyote 6.5 by 22 and 9.5 by 28 inch dome closures. Low profile tray, standard tray, light grip tray, and the universal tray. Now I'd like to run through a list of the tools you'll need to complete the installation. Pliers, 3 8 and 7 16 can wrench or socket, snips, and a knife. An optional accessory that can simplify the assembly process is the dome end plate assembly fixture. The fixture helps keep the end plate organizer assembly stable during the assembly process. Consult the application procedure provided with your closure for the specific cable openings. Measure and mark the cable for the required dimensions. Open and prepare your cable per standard company practice. When opening your cables, be sure to leave about 12 inches of strength member or Kevlar to be trimmed later. If your application uses shielded cable, install the shield connector at this point following your standard company practice. The best location for the primary cables to enter the end plate is near the bottom. For the 6.5 inch Coyote dome closure, the best locations are ports 3 and 4. For the 9.5 inch Coyote Dome closure, the best locations are ports 3, 4, 5, and 6. These locations allow for a clean transition of the fiber into the buffer tube organizer or the organizer for ribbon applications. Place a mark on the cable port selected. Remove the end cap over the selected port. Score the edges of the tabs with a knife and break each tab out with your pliers. 
scoring the edges of the tab several times will allow them to break out easier. This process can either be done with the end plate removed from the organizer or when the end plate organizer assembly is installed in the end plate fixture. Position the end plate organizer assembly next to the cable. Place the cable in the selected opening. Line the cable opening up with the center hole in the cable restraint bracket. Place a mark on the strength member just short of the end of the strength member cap. Make two marks on the cable aligned with the inside edges of the end plate. Cut the strength member. This determines the placement of the grommet. Using the cable measure tape provided, measure the cable to determine the diameter and location to use in the grommet. The range of cable diameters each grommet can accept is displayed on the face of the grommet and on the label of the grommet kit. Insert the grommet onto the cable, slide it over the area previously marked, and lubricate the exterior surface of the grommet. Insert the plugs provided into any unused holes. If your application requires express or balloon cables, lay the grommet on a flat surface. Use a utility knife to cut through the grommet. Slit the grommet on an angle so the slit does not enter the hole in the grommet at a 90 degree angle. If your application requires the use of figure eight style cable or cable with a toner wire, the messenger or toner wire must be removed in the area where the grommet will be installed. Remove any material burrs that could affect the grommet seal prior to inserting the cable into the grommet. Place the grommet onto the cable. Insert plugs into any unused holes. Apply silicone lubricant to the exterior surface of the grommet. If you are using a two-hole wide-range grommet, orient the grommet so the grommet arrows are pointing downward toward the bottom of the port. Only this grommet requires this orientation. Place the grommet onto the end plate and slide the cable inward until the strength member slides under the strength member cap. Tighten the strength member cap. Repeat this process for the remaining cable entries. Install end plate cap and tighten bolts evenly until the cap is fully seated. To verify the end plate is fully seated, visually inspect the sealing surfaces. Secure the cables to the strength member bracket with hose clamps provided. Repeat for all cables. If your application involves loose buffer tube cable, then the Coyote Dome closures to select are those designed specifically for buffer tube applications. These fiber organizers are designed to maximize the amount of buffer tube storage available and to simplify the fiber routing. For a non-dedicated fiber application, cut the fiber at the center of the loop. For a dedicated fiber application, cut the fiber on the field side of the loop. From the cable opening, measure and place a mark on the buffer tube to be spliced. For the 6.5 by 17 inch dome, measure 19 inches. For the 6.5 by 22 inch dome, measure 24 inches. And for the 9.5 by 28 inch dome, measure 34 inches. Remove the buffer tube beyond this mark and clean the fibers per your accepted company practice. If you are using the traditional Coyote splice tray, this is the location to apply a strip of blue felt. For this demonstration, we will be using the light grip splice tray. Insert the buffer tubes to be spliced into the retention sleeve and install it into the splice tray channel with the angle edge facing down. Confirm each sleeve is fully captured below the tabs. Repeat these steps for the fiber entering the opposite side of the splice tray. The light grip splice tray supports single fusion, ribbon, pigtails, or a combination. The tray is wider and deeper than PLP's standard splice trays. Tie wrap features are still available on the tray if you prefer that approach. Route fibers to be spliced one and a half times around the splice tray and into each corresponding slot and splice per your accepted company practice. Position the cover on the tray and rotate forward until the tabs engage in the base of the tray. For cover removal, compress the tabs inward and rotate the cover upward. Route expressed buffer tube into the storage brackets. Place the tray onto the organizer and secure in place. When using the 9.5 by 28 inch dome for buffer tube applications, the storage brackets are located at the bottom of the organizer. 
Additional storage brackets are also provided along the sides of the organizer. If you are routing the fiber through the side storage brackets, place the buffer tubes inside the storage brackets and snap the retainer clips into the openings. Place the tray between the organizer brackets and secure in place by tightening the strap. If your application involves ribbon cable, then the Coyote dome closures to select are those designed for ribbon or unitube applications. For a dedicated fiber application, cut the fiber on the field side of the ballooned cable. For a non-dedicated fiber application, cut the fiber at the center of the loop. Cut the ribbon to be spliced. To improve handling and storage of ribbon fiber, light grip ribbon managers can be installed over the ribbon bundle. Spread the ribbon manager apart and apply around the ribbon. For additional security, wrap one layer of 3 quarter inch vinyl tape around the ribbon manager. Space ribbon managers evenly around the storage loop. Secure core tubes of the ribbon cable and transition tubes to the surface of the transition tray with the tie wraps provided. Route slack loop to be stored into the transition compartment. PLP tip. To simplify storage, start from one end and route the fiber into the storage clips in a clockwise direction until the entire slack loop is stored. Cut a short piece of transition tube. Install a single hole light grip retention sleeve over the transport tube and slide the tubing over the ribbon until the tubing is positioned near the side wall of the transition tray. With the tie wraps provided, secure the transition tube to the side wall or bottom of the transition compartment. Install the transition tray cover. If a combination of loose buffer and unitube cable are being used, install the routing clips on the bottom of the transition tray for loose buffer tube storage. For this demonstration, we will use the light grip splice tray. The light grip splice tray supports single fusion, ribbon, pigtails, or a combination. The tray is wider and deeper than PLP's standard splice trays. Tie wrap features are still available on the tray if you prefer that approach. Insert the retention sleeve into the entry channel with the angle edge down. Confirm each sleeve is inserted between the guide rib and is fully captured below the tabs. Route the fiber to be spliced one and a half times around the splice tray into each corresponding slot and splice per your standard company practice. Position the cover onto the tray and rotate forward until the tabs engage into the base of the tray. For cover removal, compress the tabs inward and rotate the cover upward. Place the tray onto the organizer and secure in place. Repeat this process for the remaining trays. Secure in place by tightening the strap. Alternative routing for ribbon fiber. Cut a small piece of transport tube and apply a one-hole retention sleeve. Slide onto ribbon fibers to be spliced. Repeat for all ribbon fiber bundles to be spliced. PLP tip. Prior to installing heat shrink sleeves, label each with its respective splice count. Splice per your standard company practice. Insert first splice into splice block. Install the remaining splices in numerical order. Organize ribbons below the tabs on each side of the splice tray. Slide each transport tube up to the splice tray. Insert each retention sleeve into the entry channel with the angle edge down. Position the cover onto the tray and rotate forward until the tabs engage into the base of the tray. Repeat this process for each additional tray. Route slack ribbon fiber into the transition tray. Install the transition tray cover. Place the tray onto the organizer and secure with strap. Prior to installing the gasket, retighten all the end cap bolts to ensure the caps are fully assembled. With the silicone lubricant pack provided, lubricate the dome gasket on all surfaces. Slide the gasket over the organizer and press into the groove on the end plate. Insert the end plate organizer assembly into the dome. Install the collar so that it captures the end plate and the rib on the dome. Visually examine the bottom edge of the collar to confirm that it is fully seated on the rib of the dome. Close the remaining half of the collar to fully capture the end plate and engage the latch to secure. Using your can wrench, rotate the fastener on the collar to lock into place. 
An alternative method for installing the dome collar is to position the dome vertically. Insert the end plate and organizer assembly into the dome. Position the collar hinge to capture the end plate and rib on the dome. Close the collar around the dome while applying downward pressure on the collar. Examine the bottom edge of the collar to confirm that it's fully seated below the rib on the dome. Apply inward pressure around the collar to close the gap prior to engaging the latch. Using a can wrench, rotate the fastener a quarter turn to lock the collar. Flash test to 10 PSI max and check all seals with soap water solution to confirm the closure has been properly assembled. Release the pressure from the closure before leaving the job site. For further information on flash testing closures, visit our website to view the feature focus video on flash testing. PLP offers a wide range of mounting hardware for the Coyote dome closure family, including aerial bracket for ADSS applications, aerial bracket for strand applications, and the universal mounting bracket for handhole applications. Contact PLP for details on other mounting hardware and accessories. I hope this information has provided you with the basics of how the Coyote Dome closure is installed in a typical network splice point. As you can see, the installation steps are simple and few. The same design philosophy is present in other Coyote fiber optic closures. Preform Line Products proudly manufactures the Coyote Splice closures in the USA, and our experienced field sales staff and technical support specialists are there to support you at any time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.